Okay, we made it to Ireland yesterday, bleary-eyed, bit tired. I mean, few people got the 8.30 ferry, which meant they drove through the night to get to Ireland. A couple of us, me included, we got the 2.30 boat, slept on the boat, but then still had to drive, I think, it's five in the morning to get here. And we got here and we were blessed with really good waves. It was a little bit onshore in the morning, but we had a really good competition uh, and the South Coast boys really turned it on. Let's check out the action. Guy absolutely owning out there. A close second place for Jamie Hancox and Phil Horrocks uh, coming in the third place and not forgetting James Cox, uh, a valid fourth place competitor. Good sailing from the boys. Me, down and out. Okay, day two in Ireland. We got up this morning and it looked really good. The wind had gone a little bit more northerly and we had perfect down the line, but the problem was the tide was out. So it was just too many rocks in the way. Timo actually went out there anyway for a bit of a laugh. So we're still waiting. It's 11 o'clock. Uh, skippers, Duncan Coombs is uh, heading his way up here. and We're just about to find out what's going to go on today. Duncan Coombs, head judge, just turned up. He's calling it on. It does look a little bit light out there, but he's willing to try and push this through. This is the best forecast we've had, uh, what we've got for the week. So it's now or never. So we just maybe catch up with Duncan, see what he thinks. Dunks, how's it looking? All right, Ben. Uh, well, the conditions aren't as good as yesterday. Uh, the wind's dropped off a little bit, been swung a little bit more north. More side shore, so we're just going for two waves, no jumps today. Okay. And a 15 minute heat. First up is Moroni against Dark. Well, I won't lie, I'm quite keen to get this result pushed through, so uh, good luck. I uh, hope the judges are right on it today. Cheers, Ben. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> to open your mouth, close down your head, you open your legs, you close down your heart now. actually did fill in it was a little bit more northerly so it made for a bit of down the line riding unfortunately 
uh, the wind dropped out and we didn't get a chance to finish the double. Uh, standouts in that double elimination, uh, I would say Timo, he made it all the way back up to fifth. And uh, yours truly, here, I made it back up to fifth, so getting out of that last place spot, which I was slightly worried about. Timo have got to go for that fifth place and if we whoever gets through that fifth place will go on to make this man James Cox yeah. how you yeah. doing mate yeah very good very good I've had a good uh, competition so far so you go for a double I thought that was it was nearly I nearly had it yeah yeah I had I had that I had that thing in mind halfway through I was like you know what else can I do I'm kind of uh, running dry here so I thought yeah give a double a shot it didn't quite work out I think maybe if I need if I got a bit more height it could have been okay but your mind's on the rocks, right? I mean, it's... I mean, the thing is, there was a lot of rocks towards the end. You've got the other three guys in the final, obviously. John Sky, who's nearly top 10 in the world. Jamie Hancock, he's definitely top 15, top 20 in the world. Phil Horrocks, again, top so Some real tough competition. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, I, you know, I didn't really fancy my chances getting uh, getting the top slot, but I thought, uh, I'd give it a shot. And I had a had a good heat. <laughs> Start attack. It's a bit of a rarity these days, and uh, and some waves to jump. So yeah, it's good. I think everyone had fun. Most most times. Well, good skills. I have to say, I was watching watching you boys in the final. And I have to say, John Scott obviously took that final, and he looked like he was having the most fun. Big smile on his face. He said he uh, he gets conditions like that when he used to sail in Fort Ventura. I think. We've just got to wait for the win now. Like I say, that double elimination has actually stopped. The forecast is pretty terrible. If you look behind me, you can see it's pretty glass. <laughs> yeah, it's a mill pond out there. The, the waves have gone, the wind has dropped. We've got a day left. I'm not holding up much hopes for any more. What are we going to do? Yeah, what are we going to do? Well, the pub is over there. Spillan's in the distance. Uh, and I think we'll probably be heading there very soon for a couple of Guinnesses. <laughs> aren't exactly firing uh, it's all to gain for me so I've been out there pushing like a, like Josh Angulo but it's not really worked they've started to run a few of the amateur amateurs and a few of the ladies fleets but the pros are stuck on hold at the moment uh, and while we're stuck on hold we thought we'd catch another two boys and do a rigging challenge we've got Adam Lewis behind me warming up we got Bobble we just call him Bubble for now. Uh, these two are experienced riggers. We have Adam Lewis working at the OTC centre. He has basically been rigging sales for the last three years, non-stop. Bubble, obviously club vast, regular. I don't think he does much rigging, but I'm sure he knows how to do it. The rules are rigged, ready for sailing. So mass foot in the board, connected. When you're finished, hand in the air. Ropes have to be tied off and it has to be rigged correctly. Not no down or no out, or it's got to be rigged. And I will be checking. So. On your marks, go! <laughs> oh, it's a bit of a fumble from Bubble. He's just chucked his sail into a big ball. He's got his mast together. Lewis gone for the half mast. He's struggling, but it looks like Bubble might take the lead here. But it's looking neck and neck. Not much in it, but Bubble's there. All the way to the end. Oh, he's got his mast apart. Oh, it's not looking good. <laughs> Lewis hasn't cleaned his mast. Oh dear, schoolboy error. We did hear from Chris Murray that Adam Lewis is a bit of a faffer when it comes to rigging, and it's so proven so far. One 
38, so Horrocks' record is not going to be broken, but he could get second place. Should easily get second place if he can just screw that mass foot in. <laughs> oh, it's close. Oh, stop the clock. Stop the clock. 150, I think the unofficial record has been broken, but we have got another record on here, and this is the slowest rigger in the BWA fleet. At least we know who Adam Lewis is now. He is the slowest rigger in the BWA fleet. Bubble there, taking pity on his fellow competitor. Look at the laziness of this. He definitely doesn't sail like this, but <laughs> rigging. If you want to go to the OTC and you get a choice between Adam Lewis and the other little whippet, I wouldn't pick Lewis. Probably the slowest time in the fleet so far. So that is a, that's a record, mate. You've done well, you've done well. Well done. <laughs> Bubble. As you went alright, but my mask got a bit stuck. Okay, it got didn't go together properly, so I lost valuable seconds there. Do you think you could beat Horrocks' time on a good run? Yeah. Do you? Oh. So I'm not a bad time. One minute fifty. I think that takes you to second in the league. If you if you'd have done this before Horrocks, we'd have been saying congratulations, but we're not. It's still second place. But well done, boys. Uh, stay tuned for more. Rigging. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, we finished here in Ireland. The wind didn't fill in today, so we couldn't finish the pro men double. Leaves John Sky first place. Good skills, he was sailing really good, thoroughly deserved. Jamie Hancock second place, but good news for Phil Horrocks. He manages a third place, put that together with the first he got in Ross Niger, leaves him in uh, overall. Numero uno, position one, leading the tour. So he's a super happy chappy. We're going to go to the pub now for the prize giving and maybe have a chat with him and see how he's feeling. OK, we've managed to track him down. Phil Horrocks, current tour leader, Mr Horrocks. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, good. Um, it was nice to be in the lead after the first event, obviously, but to keep the lead in the second event. So Not your favourite conditions, I would have to say. No, I mean, it's... I actually, I don't mind whether it's port or star, but as long as we've got waves. So I was quite happy that the single elimination was in waves and again, the double most of what we got was in waves. I was quite glad that they stopped it where they did because <laughs> I, I think it would have been unfair to carry on in such small conditions. Current tour leader, you haven't won the tour before. You've never been British champion. Don't want to say anything, but you obviously Seek, not secretly, but you really want to win it this year, I take it. Oh, yeah, I'd love to win it, but uh, I don't know. I think it's, it's not something that I'm looking at at the moment. I'm just looking at enjoying the sailing and sailing, trying to sail well, which I kind of did in the first couple of events, so I'm happy with that. He is probably the best English sailing head on starboard tack, John Sky! <laughs> It's a tough tour we've got this year. Everyone's turned up, so it's really close to the top. I think there's about one point between Phil and John Sky. Jamie Hancock's obviously still up there. Everyone's still in with a chance. We've got two more competitions. It will be the Tyree Wave Classic and then finishing off in Cornwall for the for the, the Cornwall Wave Classic. So everything's still to play for. Four events will give one discard, so definitely not all over yet. But Phil Horrocks sitting in the driving seat. Stay tuned for the next couple of events, end of the year. <laughs>